Hello and welcome to Autumn Watch Live, coming to you from the beautiful National Arboretum here at Western Bird. Michaela, I think he just said that that, that buck was, was called groaning for a week, night and day. It was unbelievable, Martin. He didn't stop. And he also didn't stop trying to round the females in. I mean, he's got to be so fit. He doesn't eat. You imagine this the time. effort of uh, all that noise for all that time. Now, that sound, to you and I, each one sounds pretty similar. But to the females, they can tell how fit the buck is by the quality of the sound, because it, it's, it's created by the size of his chest cavity, the musculature, even if he's got parasites, I think. So they can judge how fit the buck is just from the sound that he's making. And they're choosing to be with that buck rather than him. Oh, yeah, it goes round rounding them up, but it's sort of female choice. It's hard work. It's hard, hard work being a fallow <laughs> buck, let me tell you. Now, I went to see those in, in an estate and I went with an expert and it was very difficult to see them. As you saw, they were very, very skittish. If you want to see those deer in a much easier, more accessible place, then it's better to go to a deer park, somewhere like Richmond or or Petworth Park in Sussex, and, and then it's a, a very easy and fantastic spectacle to witness. Yeah. It is, and we certainly don't want to discourage anyone from going out to look for deer, you, but they are very sensitive animals. You can't sort of bruise in there with a machine gun etiquette. You've got to take it very, very delicately. So my top advice would be find someone who's experienced when it comes to watching deer at close quarters and try and go out with them. If not, log on to our website, bbc.co.uk slash autumnwatch, and you'll find on there some guidance, giving you a few tips on how to watch deer without disturbing them and also a few of the top spots to visit. Now when it comes to larger animals in the UK there are very few species which are well poorly understood we don't fully understand their behavior and ecology we're right up there in terms of our knowledge but you know there is one species which is still shrouded in mystery and I think that's really exciting so we asked Leah Gooding to go out and find out what she could about the European eel. Very quick question they're coming in thick and fast <coughs> Moriarty on the blog why do beech hedges hold on to their leaves, but a beech tree doesn't? Well, I'm not an arboriculturalist, mate, but, I, <laughs> but I'll hazard a guess, really? because <laughs> apparently when trees are under stress, they tend to hang on to their leaves. So if you've trimmed a beech tree and therefore stopped it from becoming a tree and confined it to being a hedge, then perhaps oh. it's under stress and that's why it hangs on its leaves. That's my best guess. They do hang on to them. My beech trees don't, mm. definitely. Right. Hello and welcome to Autumn Watch Live, coming to you from the wonderful Wildfowl and Wetland Trust Centre here at Slimbridge in Gloucestershire, a fabulous place for us to base ourselves. The urban environment really can be a great place to look for wildlife and in fact many of our cities and towns have a surprising variety of habitats. Some of the wildlife adapts to those habitats but others actually seek out the warmth and protection of the urban environment. Now, in Arctic Russia, there's space for everyone. But when the Buicks arrive here, they're kind of squeezed together a bit. And things can get a bit tense. There are nine different degrees recognised of aggression, increasing aggression in Buick swans, and we've seen nearly all of them. Have a look at this. I seem to be surrounded by swans with lots of bottoms in the air. But anyway, it's time for our final osprey update. We left Roy in Ile des Oiseaux in Senegal having a fantastic osprey fest. Now we catch up with him as he tries to find out what's happened to at least one of our osprey chicks. Well, thank you very much. Now, he's a great friend of mine and he's a living legend, so we thought, why not get him down to Slimbridge and barbecue him? <laughs> Bill, I bet you're really pleased you've come. I, actually, We're I, sat on top of the fire, getting smoked out from Exactly, completely. I could hear the voice, but I can't actually see you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we were like a, a haddock or a roast chestnut, which you would have been. I'll be the chestnut, I think. You'll be the, the chestnut. Roast I'll haddock. be the haddock, yeah. 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 I've, um, I've actually been cross with my neighbours recently. This is something I wanted to bring to everyone's attention because, and, and I think this is what happens sometimes at this time of the year, everything falls off the trees, the leaves obviously and so on and so forth, and it kind of exposes whatever is left. Right. And my neighbours at least don't seem to like a lot of what is left uh, because I've had a lot of talk recently about uh, pests and vermin. Now those are what you wouldn't use those. I words, don't use the word you? pest or vermin. No, I exactly. see successful animals that outcompete us. I wouldn't say that, I'd just say <laughs> <laughs> But then you're a little more um, loquacious than I am sometimes. Anyway, we're, now we're always asking you to send in footage that you've shot yourself. And this is coming from David Simmons from Milton Keynes. It's brilliant. Have a look at this. Here's the kingfisher. 
and it's actually in his garden. And better than that, where's it going to go and fish? Here it goes. Absolutely. Who wouldn't want a kingfisher in your back garden? Well, the goldfish that it got. Okay, the goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's absolutely fantastic. What a 